Today, we're gonna go over the work from home jobs tier list where I'm gonna rank the best and the worst work from home jobs from S tier, which is the best, to F tier, which is the worst. And I'm gonna be covering a bunch of the most common work from home jobs. Most of these are going to be entry level, but I'll also include some mid-level ones for people who already have a decent amount of work experience. And I've been studying this stuff for years and I've helped hundreds of people get these types of jobs. So I definitely know what I'm talking about and I have a lot of experience with the most common ones. So I know quite a bit about this subject and the first one on the list is going to be manual QA. And that stands for manual quality assurance. This is also referred to as a manual quality assurance analyst sometimes. Times. But basically manual QA is kind of like what an editor is to a writer, right? So if a software developer was like a writer, manual QA would be like an editor. And basically you're just making sure that the software runs smoothly and doesn't have any glitches or bugs. And they're able to test products and find a bunch of these glitches so that your customers don't have to. And manual QA makes about $71,000 a year. Now you might be thinking you have to be a master coder in order to get into manual QA. And actually that's not true. You can actually get into this position without having a college degree or previous experience, but you do have to have the right skills and portfolio. And that's where Careerist comes in and they offer online live courses to teach you the skills that you need to know. And according to coursereport.com, Careerist is one of the best online boot camps. Careerist graduates are already working in over a thousand different companies in 40 different states. And they're working in jobs related to the courses that Careerist offers, such as manual QA, sales engineering, UX design, systems engineering, and data analytics. Now, what actually sets Careerist apart is it caters to people who have no prior tech experience, technical background, or technical education. And they provide comprehensive training that equips you with the necessary skills to get a job in the tech industry. You'll attend live classes, get internships to practice your skills, receive personalized guidance from a career coach and receive support at every stage until you achieve your career goals. So thanks to Careers for sponsoring this video. They are the go-to solution if you're trying to get into a career like manual QA. And I do have a coupon code for 10% if you click the link down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. So overall, I'm gonna put manual QA into S tier. The next one on the list is going to be content marketer. So this is a new-ish type of marketing position and it's gotten more popular in the last few years. And you've probably seen how billion dollar companies are starting to create content. Even billionaires are starting to create content. Just look at the all in podcast. And there's a reason for that. They're not just doing it because it's fun, although it is pretty fun. They're doing it because content marketing is one of the easiest ways to establish a brand presence, get leads, sales, and make more money. And content marketers specialize in this. And they also make pretty good money, about $63,000 a year, even though this is still an entry level position. And typically in this position, they actually prefer younger people because younger people are going to be more familiar with what the current meta is in digital marketing. So this is another one I really like. And I think I read a survey that said like 20 to 30% of young people actually want to become YouTubers. So what better way to learn how to be a content marketer than to get paid to do it? So overall, I'm going to put this one into S tier as well. So I'm starting off with some good ones. There's going to be a lot of S tiers at the beginning, but I promise not all of them are going to be like that. The next one on the list is going to be a paid media specialist. And this position might include paid search, affiliate marketing, social media advertising and more. And they make around $54,000 a year. So this is another one where you don't have to have a college degree or previous experience. They also probably prefer younger people that you know, don't have that much experience. And it's overall a pretty good one. I'll put it into A tier. The next one on the list is going to be a front end developer. So this is a type of software developer and it's one of the easier ones to break into, but it's also one of the most saturated ones because of the fact that it's easier to break into. So basically you're gonna be working on the front end of software or a website, which basically means the part that people can actually see. So I still think this one is pretty good, but realistically speaking, 10 years ago, you used to be able to get a job as a front end developer if you had a pulse and a warm body. Now you have to actually know your stuff. You really do have to teach yourself, whether that's going to college, self-teaching, going to a boot camp, an online course, etc. Plus in the last year or so, the labor market has changed a little bit and there has been a lot of layoffs in tech. And so for that reason, I still think this one is really good, but it takes a bit longer to get into than some of the other ones on the list. And it pays well about $84,000 a year, but there's some that you can get into and make that money faster. So I'll put this one into high AT 
tier status. The next one on the list is going to be a mobile developer. So this is exactly what it sounds like. You're basically a software developer for mobile devices. And notice how much more money they make than front end developers. They make about $116,000 a year. Now it's probably around the same level of difficulty in order to learn the skills, but it's much easier to get a job because there's a lot less competition and saturation. So there's a lot of opportunities, for instance, if you learn React. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in S tier. And by the way, if you disagree with any of my ratings, please let me know down in the comment section below. I like to get a conversation started because hey, even if we disagree, everybody can learn something from it. The next one on the list is going to be a DevOps engineer. And this is one of my favorite software development related careers. So DevOps engineer is kind of like software developer mixed with manual QA mixed with IT. And their main job is to get things shipped fast. What that means in the technology world is getting a product from prototype to being able to actually be used by customers as fast as possible. Now, this is not typically an entry level software development position. Usually you're going to have to have a bit of experience to get into this one. But of course, there are exceptions and DevOps engineers make over one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. So this one is great. I'm going to put it into S tier. The next one on the list is a customer service representative. So this is a job that a lot of people kind of frown upon, sort of look down on. It. But the truth is, this is one of the easiest remote jobs that you can possibly get. And you can literally get this one in many states as a 16 year old, right? It definitely does not require a college degree or previous experience. And yes, I know it's probably not something you want to do for long, but it's a great way to get your foot in the door. And there's actually some pretty good jobs that you can naturally move into, especially if you become a customer service representative in the technology industry. And so this is not a bad first job to get, especially if you're trying to get a remote job. And with this one, you can expect to make about $39,000 a year. So over Overall, I'm debating whether to put this in C tier or B tier. I think it'll go in low B tier. The next one on the list is going to be tech sales. I think everybody knows my feelings on tech sales. I've talked about it many times on the channel. The entry level career here would be BDR or SDR, which stands for business development representative or sales development representative. Absolutely love this career. Super easy to get into tech with this. The entry level positions pay around 70,000 a year, which is amazing. You don't need a college degree or previous experience and technology sales in general pay pays 141,000. Plus there are even higher paying jobs you can get to such as account executive. So yeah, this one is great. I will give it an easy S tier rating. Another really great one, probably the easiest job to land in the technology industry if you're just trying to get your foot in the door because it's easy to move around once you're in is going to be IT help desk. Now tech sales and IT help desk are kind of tied in terms of how easy they are to get in. But the truth is tech sales, even though it's in the technology industry is kind of more of a business career. So I would say IT help Help desk is the easiest technology career to get into the tech industry. And basically you're going to be answering technology, technical related questions for customers, as well as your coworkers. And you'll make around $53,000 a year. Now there's so many different positions you can move into from here. This is an entry level position. Like I said, doesn't require a college degree, doesn't require previous experience. And there's many IT related jobs where you can make multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. So I'll put this one into S tier as well. The next one on the list is going to be another great one. I promise I'm I'm not going to put all of them into S tier, but this is going to be data analyst. So data analyst is one of the lower level, kind of like an entry level data related position. And anything that is data related is going to be incredibly valuable. And basically you're going to be organizing and analyzing data in such a way where it can deliver actual results for a company. And data analysts make about $80,000 a year. So this is another S tier career. Really like this one. It is a bit harder to get into at the entry level. And there is a lot of argument about this one, whether you should get a college degree degree or not. But in the technology industry, if you have the skills and you can prove that you have those skills, that's all you really need. But a lot of people do get statistics or computer science degrees before they go into data analysis. But with that being said, I'm still going to put this one into S tier. The next one on the list is going to be a freelance writer. So I have kind of mixed feelings about this one. I do think there's a lot of good writing opportunities out there, but most writers don't actually take advantage of those. For instance, I think one of the best skills you could possibly learn right now is becoming a YouTube script writer. I know a bunch of YouTubers and that's one of their biggest pain points. They cannot find anybody that can properly research and write scripts because YouTube script writing is completely different than any other type of writing. So a lot of people fail when it comes to writing. It does make about $52,000 a year for the people who succeed, but a lot of people fail. But if you specialize, you go into the right thing, for instance, becoming a YouTube script writer or even better specializing in a particular niche, this one can be good. But overall, I have to give this one a C tier rating. But if you're able to specialize and you do the right things, this one can be a lot higher. The next
next one on the list is going to be a financial analyst. So this is one where you do have to have a degree to get into it, typically an accounting or a finance degree. And basically you're gonna be analyzing financial data and financial analysts make about $87,000 a year. So the fact that you do have to get a college degree to get into this one is going to make me rank it a little lower. But with that being said, if you have an accounting or a finance degree, this one can be really good. I'll give this one an A tier rating. The next one on the list is going to be a legal assistant. And basically you're gonna be providing crucial administrative support to legal professionals. Now in this position, you make about $50,000 a year and you don't have to have a college degree or previous experience, although some legal firms might prefer if you do. So overall, this is a pretty good one. I'll give it a C tier rating. Next one is going to be a wealth manager. Now this is obviously not an entry level career. Nobody's gonna let you manage their wealth if you don't have any experience, unless you're Sam Bankman Freed, of course. You also need to have degrees and certifications, but for that, you make about $170,000 a year. So pretty good, but it does have a pretty big barrier to entry. I'll give this one a B tier rating. Next one is going to be a travel agent. You're gonna be helping people to plan and book vacation experiences. And travel agents make about $53,000 a year. So overall, this one's pretty good. I kinda of wanna put it in high C tier or low B tier. I guess I'll give it a B tier rating. The next one on the list is going to be a virtual assistant. So this one is not as good for people from first world English speaking countries like the United States, but it's actually really good for people outside of that. And the reason for that is because very simply, people from outside the United States are just as smart as people in the US and they can kind of do these same types of tasks. But there are certain types of tasks where it's just better to have a virtual assistant from the US. And VAs from the US make about $44,000 a year. So overall, not a huge fan of this one. Of course, there's certain exceptions like executive VAs can be pretty good, but typically this is a position that does require some experience and you're not getting paid all that well. So I'm gonna put this one into C tier. The next one is going to be digital marketer. This is another one of my favorite careers. You do not have to have a college degree or any previous experience, but you do have to have the skills and build a portfolio. And digital marketers make about $64,000 a year. So there's also a bunch of different types of digital marketers. There's SEO, which is search engine optimization. There's PPC, which is pay-per-click. So definitely look into those. But this is the one where, in my opinion, I see the most people going into it and actually enjoying their job. Plus there's a lot of upward mobility. There's many marketing positions where you can make it into the hundreds of thousands of dollars a year range. And it's a great job to start out at if you want to start a business down the line. So I'm gonna put this one into S tier as well. The next one on the list is going to be a data entry specialist. And I have to put something into F tier. So I think data entry specialist is probably gonna be the one. I'm not even gonna go over the stats, very low. It's also mind numbing work. It can be really hard on your hands. Like you can develop carpal tunnel at a young age. You're also typically doing jobs that anybody else in the world can also also do. And so why in the world would a company pay you like five times as much? But the one good thing about this is it can usually be done remotely, but that's not enough. I'm still going to have to put this one into F tier. The next one is going to be transcriptionist. So transcriptionist is also pretty bad. I will say it's pretty easy to land these types of jobs just to get started off. Typically, you're going to start working either as a freelancer or just part time, but it is easy to land these jobs and start making money. So that and the fact that you can do it remotely are kind of the two saving graces. But with that being said, just about everything else is pretty bad, kind of like data entry. It's extremely mind numbing work, for instance. And a lot of transcriptionists will actually report that they will actually start typing things that people say if they're ever around their computer. So that's how autopilot they have to go in order to do this job. So some types of transcription are better than others. For instance, legal transcription is going to be a little better, but this is definitely not something you want to do forever. Maybe do it for an entry level job just to get a bit of experience. But overall, I'm going to put this one into D tier. All right, so I got to speed up so I can't go over the salary or anything thing like that. This video is running too long. Project manager is next. Really like project manager, kind of like entrepreneurship with training wheels. It's not an entry level job. Typically, you do have to have some experience before you go into this role, but you do get to develop your leadership and management skills and you get paid pretty well. So I'll put this one into a tier. Next one on the list is going to be operations manager. This is where you manage the operations of an organization, which is incredibly important, especially when your business starts to get bigger. It's definitely not an entry level role. You're going to have to have some experience, but I really like this one as well. It pays really well. You can do it remotely sometimes. So I'll put this one into A tier as well. Next, I'm going to talk about cloud related jobs in general. So basically jobs where you're working in Azure or AWS, which is Amazon Web Systems. These are extremely hot right now. So I mean, these are some of the easiest jobs to land and also some of the easiest jobs to make really good money with. So I'll put this into S tier. Next is going to be appointment setter. So if you're somebody who wants to start a business down the line, especially kind of a cash flow online business, such as an agency,
agency or a consulting firm or selling courses or selling coaching, anything like that, appointment setter is probably one of the best careers you can possibly start out in. So if that's what you want to do, appointment setter is a great way to go. I'll put it into S tier. Another really good one to go into if you want to go into one of those online businesses is high ticket sales. So basically you would be what's known as a closer. The appointment setter is the one who sets up the appointments. A lot of the time they'll do that through DM. Sometimes they'll do cold outreach, calling people. And then sometimes they'll do really quick appointments just to make sure that the person is qualified. And then they pass them on to the closer, which is the high ticket salesperson. This is another really good one, probably not for everyone because it is kind of a high pressure position, but you can make even more money than you can as an appointment setter. So this one is also going to go into S tier. The next one is going to be a customer success manager. And this is a position that's getting more and more common. So usually you're going to be working in either a high ticket business or a B2B business. That's a business that sells products or services to other businesses. And you're going to be working very closely with your clients to make sure that that product or service is serving them correctly. So you're almost like their personalized consultant for that product or service. So really good position. I really like this one. I think I'm going to put it into A tier. And then the next one I'm going to talk about is content strategist. So this one is going to be great for you if you're somebody who eventually wants to start a YouTube channel or some kind of online brand. And it's exactly what it sounds like. You're basically coming up with strategies to make your content do really well or make the content of a company do really well. So I do really like this one. Right now, it's kind of the wild, wild west. There really isn't an infrastructure to become a content strategist. So you kind of have to get creative in order to get a job in this role. So for instance, you'd probably be cold emailing different businesses as well as content creators out there. And that's how you'd be able to get your first job. So the best way to become a content strategist, in my opinion, is to just start making content yourself. Other people might see your content, think it's really good, and then they might want to hire you. So because of the fact that it's a bit hard to get into and there's not really an infrastructure here, I'm going to put this one into A tier, but it definitely could be an S tier career in the future. Now, if you like this job, check out my best remote job tier list where I go over a bunch of other careers. And you can check that out by clicking right here.